Hey guys, in today's video we're going to be working with the Ender 3 Pro. One very interesting thing that I had seen a while back but never really paid close attention to is E3D's Revo series of hot ends. So let's jump on the computer and I'll show you what makes this hot end design so unique and why I think it's probably one of the best upgrades that you can make to your printer currently in 2023. Guys, if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing, turn on your notification bell, and leave some comments. I love reading the comments and do my best to get back to you guys as soon as I see them. All right, guys, so here we are on E3D's website. And when they first came out with this Revo hot end, it was strictly uh, for um, like Prusa style printers that use this type of uh, use this type of mount. But what I noticed recently is that they came out with a version for the Creality printer. And uh, when you first look at it, I mean, it, you know, it's it's kind of a little bit of a different design. But they really don't. give you a whole lot of information on uh, what makes this thing so awesome. So let me show you this quick video that came from their website uh, just to give you an idea of what this thing is all about. So this, this one is their high flow nozzle, but uh, I want to show you the, the design features that I find the most interesting because it eliminates one of the biggest problems with all 3D printers. Let me show you how this thing compares to a standard hot end. So what I have here is a couple of CAD models. One is the Micro Swiss hot end, and the second one is the Revo. So let's let's take a look at the, the cross section of this, so I can show you guys what makes these things so unique. So if you look at the two here one over the other. You can see that in, in this area right here on the Micro Swiss, this is where the sealing surface is. So when you swap out your nozzle and you first assemble this thing, you need to tighten these two surfaces against each other using the grip provided by this these threads here. And this has always been, for me, the biggest point of failure with this type of sealing system is that not only is it taking place in, in the most hostile environment, but anything that gets in between the nozzle and this heat break will cause the seal to fail. So if for whatever reason you need to swap out your nozzle, once you remove the nozzle, if there's any residue, anything left over, Chances are you're not going to seal this properly. And get this, getting this thing to seal properly in the first place is another challenge in and of itself because it has to be torqued just right. And once it's tightened, you really can't fiddle too much with this nozzle 
when it's hot. So if you get a lot of residue built up around the nozzle and you're trying to use a brass brush to remove some of that debris off of the nozzle prior to your next print, chances are you're going to loosen this, this nozzle over time. And this has happened to me on several occasions. And the primary reason why I tend to stick with Bowden, because the Bowden tube can provide that extra level of pressure to keep this seal's integrity. But let me show you what's real interesting about what they did with this Revo hot end. So here on the top you got the Revo. And notice that there's no threaded tip that has to mate with a heat break. What they've done here is they've mechanically pressed this stainless steel shaft between the two brass components. So you got the nozzle that sits inside of the heating block and the sleeve of the heat break mechanically pressed inside of that nozzle and pressed to the other threaded side that goes into the heat sink. So th this is what makes this thing for me extremely unique. I mean, I think this design is just, I mean, I looked at this and I thought, wow, they just solved the biggest issue with 3D printing and, and people getting into 3D printing for the first time. I can't tell you how many of my friends have bought 3D printers and after a few days, a couple of weeks, the 3D printer is just in the corner collecting dust and it's not being utilized because of some component failure, clogs, or other issues that surface from 3D printing. So I want to jump over. Let's jump over to the printer. I'll show you the exact kit that I purchased. That way you guys can uh, check it out and we'll install it on the Ender 3 Pro. All right, guys, so here it is. And when you order this thing, you got to make sure that you select the proper voltage. I don't know why they would have 12 volts, but anyway, uh, you need a 24 volt version. And these things are not cheap. The the kit, the way that I got it, along with an extra high flow nozzle, was $189.17. So this thing just by itself is the price of a Ender 3 V2. This is not something that you want to swap out right away. Uh, what I recommend is that you use your Ender 3 V2 or Ender 3, learn how to print with it, and once you start running into the clogging issues and all of that, then then this might be something to consider. Because once you change it, you never have to mess with this again. And, uh, a lot of the expenses with 3D printers is is replacing these parts that, that get messed up due to clogs and uh, other issues. So let's uh, get into this thing, and I'll show you. What comes in the box so this one is a super basic all it brought was the extra nozzle and then uh, also the assembled Revo hot end now when you first get this I've, I've been I opened this and I already played with this a little bit but when you get this 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 thing is bent straight out and I'll show you what uh, what's under here so you can get an idea so this is a So it's a little piece of metal, and I'll take it apart so you can see what I'm talking about here. So it's a piece of metal. It was straight, but I bent it up, and instead of just taking it and trying to bend it, because... Uh, to me, it looks like you could damage this, this part pretty easily because it does have the ceramic heating material kind of surrounding this, this uh, tiny heat block. What I did was I loosened the grip on these, these two little uh, metal tabs. I carefully folded them open using a small needle-nose plier and a flathead screwdriver. And once I got it open, I made I, I moved the wires down out of the way a little bit grabbed the little metal strip with my needle nose pliers and then used another set of needle nose pliers to bend this at the angle that I needed to, to bend it at and then I just re retightened these uh, these two tabs around the cables so that, that's the way I did it uh, I found that it works pretty well and I didn't damage the heating element at all one thing to to be careful with is that once you pull this spring out of here you got to play with it a little bit to get it to reseat on this little metal protrusion 
But if you take your time and, and you just use a flathead screwdriver, you can you can get it back on there. Uh, so this is the part that I find that is super interesting with this, is that this metal sleeve is mechanically pressed inside of the brass nozzle. So there's no there's no way this can leak because the the heated part of the nozzle is is this section this section right here. So anything above this section doesn't get any heat. This part goes into the uh heat sink and is very cold. The heat break itself is the transition point and below that that's where you have the melt zone and there's nothing in here that can leak. So that, that's why I think that this this thing here is is just an incredible design. I mean, these people, man, they just knocked it out of the park with this thing. So let me show you the uh, high flow nozzle. So the high flow nozzle is the one that you saw in the video. It has kind of a section in the middle that helps split up the filament while it goes through the melt zone. You can see that in the middle here. You look at these two. This one has that little metal section pressed in there. And that's the thing that has the little thing that splits up the uh, the filament as it's going through the melt zone to evenly heat it before putting it back together and ejecting it through the nozzle. So anyway, super cool. Uh, just this thing alone, I think it was like 50 bucks. So these things are not cheap. I, I do recommend if you are going to spend the money is is to go ahead and, and get the uh, the rest of the size nozzles that are available. Uh, I wanted to get them all in this uh, high flow version so I'm going to wait for all the different sizes to come out in high flow and then just get them that way but if you're not needing the high flow feature you can pick up the uh, three additional sizes uh, for for not too much more money uh, the single nozzles are much more expensive it's more economical if you get it as a kit when you first order it all right so i'm going to install this over here to install it it's super easy just push it in there and then screw it down and the beauty of it is you don't need a torque wrench you don't need an opening wrench nothing just as soon as it bottoms out finger tight that's all you need this thing is not going to come loose it's not going to come out of there uh, one another, another thing that I had to do was to design a new minimalist fan bracket. So I spent the last few days designing this one. This will fit um, all the Ender series of printers. Uh, you may need to check on the Ender 3 Neo and Ender 3 Neo Max because the backplate may, may be different. I'm not sure. I know the mount for the hot end will work. I just don't know if um, the bolt configurations are the same. But uh, anyway, here, here it is here. Let me... So that's what it looks like without the uh, Noctua fan on it. And then let me knock off the side fans. It's got some channels on the back. Um, that'll that'll help uh, route the wires a little bit easier. Also has a mounting point over here for the ADXL 345. So if you decide later on that you want to add clipper, you can uh, use that as a mounting point for the accelerometer. Uh, grooves on the side. I got away from drilling the hole all the way through just to make it easier to remove. Uh, the only wire that has to be run through this hole is the front facing fan. And this is about a seven millimeter opening and it just comes up through here. So to uninstall it, it's pretty easy. Just unplug it from the wiring harness and pull it through this hole. And uh, the whole thing is held on by the two screws that hold the hot end down. So there it is right there. So this fits around these two pins back here. And then the hot end sandwiches it all down.
Yeah, the package is pretty compact. The hot end is super light as it is, a lot lighter than the ones that come with a standard big aluminum block. This thing weighs very little. So if you guys want to want to go fast, minimizing the weight of the hot end is the the key to doing it. All right, so let's jump uh, back to the printer and I'll show you what this thing looks like uh, after I printed it. All right, it's done. Let's clean the thing up and uh, install it. the left fan duct And the reason that this is important is because I don't want any airflow transferring down on top of my parts, especially if you're going to try to print with ABS or nylon. That's what makes those materials difficult to print, is you get all this airflow coming down on top of the material, causes it to lift, warp, and do a bunch of uh, ugly stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and just assemble this really easy. I designed it to be a lot easier to install than uh, the previous versions. And this is a tight fit. I also added a couple of channels here on the sides. So before on the previous design, I had holes and you would have to fish the wire through the holes. But when it comes time to take these things apart, undoing the cables and all that was a real chore. So I decided to change the design. And now I have these, these, these grooves. So what you could do now is Install your fan on the groove and then just push the wire into these channels to get them out of the way. This first one will go in the channel and come out and up through here. The fan from the other side goes on this side, follows the channel, goes behind, and again makes its way up through here and then comes up and out. Uh, in addition to that, I had to redesign some ducts. Over here are the redesigned ducts. And you can use either the stock heatsink fan or the Noctua fans. All right, let's get into installing this thing on the Ender 3 Pro. All right, guys, let's take this thing apart. All right, so just get your wire tucked behind the, the channel here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to mount it. So that way I don't have to worry about that wire coming off before I mess with the front fan. I find that using a set of tweezers here helps tremendously. One thing I like to use is a uh, bubble level here because I've noticed that if I don't get this thing level, I'll have one duct, one of the blower ducts lower than the other. And you don't want that. You want the blower ducts to be even. So you don't have any, any problems with any of your blower ducts hitting any of your parts during the print. So I'm just going to tighten up one side and then tighten up the other side. All right, so it's level there. Got my two fans installed. I just need to put the uh, Noctua in there. I'm going to twist these two together so they uh, can more or less come out in the same place. And again, if you have a set of tweezers, grab these wires with a tweezer. It'll be a little easier.
And this uh, fan bracket already has the mount for the ADXL 345. So if you guys decide later on to install Clipper, you'll have a place to mount the accelerometer. All right, guys, so let's set our Z offset. So what we want to do first uh, is to home the printer. And this method, this method will work with Miguel's professional firmware or any other firmware that gives you access to stowing and deploying the probe. So let me uh, get in close here and show you on the menu. So you want to make sure that the firmware that you're using has this feature. Uh, so in Miguel's professional firmware, you go over to advanced, you go to probe settings, and from this menu here, you can go down to deploy Z probe and it'll drop the pin on the probe. So you want to be able to deploy and stow the the probe. All right, so let me show you this little this little shortcut. So we're gonna start by homing the printer. All right, once that's done, we're going to go into the menu. I'm going to show you this quick little shortcut to setting your Z offset super fast. So you're going to go back to the advanced settings, probe settings, and you want to set your Z offset to um, like some kind of a negative number. So let, let me show you right now what the current Z position is. So if you go to move axis, you can see that the Z right now is five millimeters. So zero is five millimeters below this number. So what we want is we want to go below, we want the nozzle to almost touch the bed. So to do that, we gotta lower the nozzle. So I'm I'm estimating that it's probably probably something like two more millimeters, so like seven millimeters total. So let me show you something that you can do. You can go back, back again. Go to Advanced, Probe Settings, and then over here you're going to set your probe offset to negative 2. And then we need to home the printer again. So we'll go back, back. And I'm going to home the printer again. All right, so now let's go back to Z, to the move axis, and you can see see how now we have seven millimeters of travel before we get to zero. And uh, at zero, the nozzle is probably going to hit the bed, but we don't want to do that. So this, this is what we're going to do. So now we're going to go back again. We're going to go back again. We're going to go to advanced probe settings. And we're going to deploy the probe. All right. So let me show you what we're going to do next. So now we're going to go back, back again. And in the prepare menu, we're going to go to move access. We're going to enable live move. And then we're going to adjust the Z. So let me show you what we're going to do with the printer next. So currently the printer has the, let me see if I can get a shot of both the display and the, uh, the probe. 
So if you notice what I have here is it is an adjustable uh, probe mount. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to loosen the set screw. And then I'm going to start to bring the Z down. So I'm going to, so remember it's on live move. So as you lower it, the, the hot end is going to move. And we're going to need two feeler gauges for this. We're going to need a 0.5 millimeter feeler gauge. So you have that one. And we're also going to need a 0.25 millimeter feeler gauge. So we're going to start with the 0.5. We're going to put it underneath the nozzle and make sure that it's uh, laying flat. Sometimes these feeler gauges can be a little bit bent, so make sure you got the flat side, flattest part under the nozzle. And then I'm going to start lowering the, the Z. So as I lower it, this thing is going to come down. So you're not, you notice that the probe Right now it's touching the bed, right? But we don't want the probe touching the bed. I want to be able to come lower with the nozzle. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use the adjuster screw and I'm going to move the probe up. So I'm going to screw the probe all the way to the top and I'm going to continue to lower the, the nozzle down till the nozzle makes contact with that feeler gauge. And right there, right there, I'm making contact with the feeler gauge. Okay. Yep. All right, so I'm going to get the feeler gauge out of the way. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to lower. So let me show you what I'm doing here with this, with this thing here. So if you notice. The probe is the probe is deployed, and I'm gonna I'm gonna start to move the probe's position down until it triggers. You'll know when it triggers because it's gonna it's gonna go red and it's gonna and the probe will, will stow. Okay, so I'm just gonna slowly slowly lower this until it triggers, and you don't want to go fast. You want to go slow. Right there. Okay, so you see how it's triggered right there? All right, so now what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna tighten this. And then we're gonna we're gonna check it. I'm gonna raise my Z. Remember we're still on live live adjustment. So now I'm gonna turn off the live adjustment and I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna change my Z offset. Um to zero. Let me show you that. Let me show you that. All right, so advanced probe settings, Z offset. I'm going to change this back to zero. Okay. Back again, and I'm going to, I'm going to store these settings. I'll go back again and I'm going to home the printer. All right, and I'm going to check my Z offset. So to check the Z offset from the main menu, we're going to go. We're going to go back, back, and from here, from the prepare menu, you're going to scroll down to probe, to Z probe wizard. You're going to select that, and we want to move the Z to home. Okay. 
It's going to deploy the probe. And then it's going to move the hot end down to the current Z position. All right, so now what we're going to do next is we're going to get our 0.2 millimeter, 0.25 millimeter feeler gauge and just confirm uh, if, if we're uh, on the money or if we're off. All right, so I'm going to put this thing upside down. Okay. All right. So now I'm going to go over here to the menu. And there is a probe Z offset. And as you move this number, the, the hot end is going to move. So I'm going to put you back over here so you can see what's going on with the hot end. Let me pull it in real close. Yeah, I'm not sure if you can see that. Okay, so right now I got a gap. All right, so now as I start to lower the Z offset, the hot end is going to come down. And as soon as it makes contact, with that 0.25 millimeter feeler gauge, then I'm done setting my, my Z offset. Okay, and right there I'm dragging. So you don't want it you don't want a lot of pressure on this just okay right there all right so i'm going to try it right there so let's check our z offset and what you want is you want to you want a low z offset you don't want you don't want your z offset to be negative 1.8 or something like that so if you have a z offset that is negative 1.8 millimeters then if your build surface has a deviation that is 0.2 or greater then what will happen is the marlin will ignore that that area of the mesh so i used to have a lot of problems with this early on when i was dealing with the unified bed leveling and that's because i didn't know about this uh minimum z offset that's hard set in the firmware so by always having a probe offset that is very small, so this probe offset is less than a quarter of a millimeter. And uh, that means that I can have a deviation in my build plate of 1.75 millimeters. That, I mean, that's huge. That's like a, a deep gouge in your build plate. All right, so let's uh, fire off a test print and let's check this, check and see uh, how we did. So I always like to set the Z offset this way. And um, if you guys are interested in the adjustable probe mount, and uh, as soon as they're available, I'll let you guys know, and uh, you guys can pick one up on Amazon. All right, let's load some filament and print off a test print. Now make sure that you save your settings. So I'm just going over here to Control, Store Settings. And now I'm going to home the printer once again. All right, let's do a quick airflow test to make sure that I got the duct alignment right. I'm going to kick on the fans here. Oh, yeah, that's awesome. Perfect. All right, let's uh, let me turn this off, and then we'll fire off a test print. All right, guys, now that we got it all put together and I've uh, calibrated the print temperature, retraction, retraction distance, and the Z offset is all tuned up. Let's try to see if we can print something uh, fast. And let me show you how to do that in Miguel's professional firmware. So what you want to do is slice your model in Cura using something like 100 millimeters a second. And when you get to the menu here, once you initiate the print, um, there's a uh, some settings here that you can use to make it print way faster than, than normal. So let's uh, load up a Benchy here.
And so here's the, the menu that you're going to use. So just select Tune. And then uh, turn up your speed. Uh, the default speed is 100%. So I got mine turned up to 300%. And then another thing that you want to also change is the flow rate. Uh, default is 100% flow rate. So I found that increasing the flow rate uh, by 10% gives you enough flow to keep up with the speed and if you need more flow rate you can you can increase it I wouldn't recommend increasing it more than five percent at a time till you get it just right another thing that I tweaked was the Z stepper motor speed so the acceleration I changed that to 250 and that allows a real fast transition from one layer to the next and I'll start off the print so you guys can see at uh, regular speed and then I'll switch over to a time lapse because this it's not like a five minute bench or anything, but it is going to print a lot faster than normal.
Alright guys, the bench she completed in 38 minutes. And let's get her off of here and inspect it. Yeah, so not not bad at all. It doesn't have any uh, doesn't have any ringing, considering the the pace that it was printing. Yeah, no ringing at all. Wow. No ringing. A couple little uh, wisps here and there, but nothing major. Yeah, I'm pretty impressed with this thing. See a little closer. Pretty cool. So yeah, I'm super impressed. I think that you can uh, push pretty good speed just using uh, standard Marlin firmware. And uh, yeah, Miguel's professional firmware gives you a lot of adjustability mid-print to help you guys figure out what the, the max capability is of the printers. Hey guys, if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing, turn on your notification bell, and leave me some comments. I love reading the comments, and do my best to get back to you guys as soon as I see them. Alright guys, until the next video, take care.